Okay, and thanks for tuning in to the Orchard Church Family Ministry Podcast. This podcast and others can be found on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Google, or wherever you find your podcast. We are indeed helping you make disciples in your home. So today we have a special guest with us. His name is Ryan Stewart. Ryan, welcome to the podcast. It's good to be here, Jason. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, Ryan, you and I have been uh, connected for several years because we both serve at the Orchard Church. And so, Ryan, give, give me and the audience just a, a quick idea, uh, a little about you and your position at the Orchard Church. Great. So, uh, as Jason stated, I'm Ryan Stewart. I'm the middle school director uh, here at the Orchard Church. Um, I'm a South Carolina boy, born and raised. Uh, God brought me and my wife, Heather, here to Memphis, uh, you know, in, in, in some ways that only God truly could. Um, uh, Heather and I just had a son. Uh, we, we named him David. He is, he is just the light of our world right now. Uh, starting to grow some teeth, you know, so <laughs> that's always fun. Uh, and, and yeah, as a, as, a, as a middle school director, I have the blessing to, you know, try and try and impart the gospel to middle schoolers who sometimes really don't want to pay attention to it. <laughs> well, and I, I know that is, uh, that can be difficult at times, Ryan, you know, as a student pastor for many years myself, I know that, uh, that is, you know, you, you try to come along middle school students and their families, and you're trying to partner with those parents and you're trying to come along and, and help them understand what it means to follow Christ and understanding that, that not every middle school even has that as an interest. So then you're, you're helping them, you know, learn to, uh, to love God, love people and to have a blast doing it. And, uh, so it, I certainly understand where you're coming from, but Ryan, I serve as the family's pastor at the Orchard Church, and the other day we were talking about phase three and what it what, what it might mean for us in phase three. And so we were we were talking about different plans, and and I thought that that it was very interesting some of the things that you were sh- sharing and saying. And I thought that might be that 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 some of the folks that out there and that are listening to the podcast might have some interest in this as as well. One of the things that you were really focusing in on in phase three was this idea of reconnection. And I thought that was really good. So Ryan, today I want us to just really unpack this idea of reconnecting after COVID. Sound good? Oh yeah. Can't wait. All right. So, so tell me, Ryan, what does it mean? What does it mean when we say reconnecting, reconnecting after COVID? Sure. So COVID has, has, has broken a lot of the connections that we, that, that our society have built up students connections to one another have been weakened or have oftentimes just disappeared their connection to the church to has 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 been weakened their their connection to their parents in some cases their connections uh in 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 the case of the orchard to the small group leader their connection to us as ministry staff all of those have been weakened by covid you know a zoom call can only go so far right right Uh, right so, so tell me a little bit about the importance, though. Why was this, you know, high on your radar? Why is it so important, Ryan? So, Jason, I was just doing a, a, l- a little bit of research earlier this week, um, and I actually found uh, something that was written by the American Psychological Association, you know, the APA. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this was written back in May. So, so this isn't even COVID-related, but it's so interesting how relevant it is being being written before COVID really even happened. So uh, May 2019, by the way, not, not, you know, a month ago. Uh, uh, I just, I just pulled an excerpt from it. Uh, The topic of this paper was, was with regards to loneliness and isolation and its effect on the human body and the human mind. And I just have a little excerpt here. Uh, this article points to evidence leaking perceived social isolation. And, and that's an important word there, perceived social isolation, the feeling of isolation. They've linked it with adverse health consequences, including depression, poor sleep quality, impaired executive function, accelerated cognitive decline, poor cardiovascular function, and impaired immunity at every stage of life. And, you know, it just, just, you know, in, in, in my sphere of influence at the orchard, trying to stay connected to families, I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen in my own house, in my own life. Uh, you know, a lot of kids screen time has been going way up 
whether it's Zoom calls, video games, trying to FaceTime, trying to get some sort of social connection, they've been running towards things that even further accelerate mental decline. Things, things like video games and screen time. There's, there's, there's plenty of studies out there linking those things to, to mental degre- degradation. Sure. Um, All right. So, so Ryan, give me, give me one or two things that you feel like that we've lost during this COVID time. Sure. So one of the things that I think we've lost, and this answer is going to sound strange, but just bear with me for a second, uh, because it seems like here lately we've had an, abu- we've had an abundance of it, is time. Hmm. And, and let me explain. So uh, we have lost, in the ministry world, we have lost three months up to this point of time to spend with students here at the church, investing in them, ministering to them in person at the church. And, that, and that's not just us. They've lost time with each other. They've lost time with their small group leaders, those crucial discipleship relationships that they've been able to form in person week after week at the church. That time has been lost. Yeah, I see. So, so then let's turn it a little bit, Ryan. We understand the need. We understand some of the things that have been lost over this time, and we want to partner with those families, and we want to partner with parents in that. So what are, what are say you're a parent at home, what are the steps to reconnecting? What are the steps to reconnecting students, families, let's say back to staff, back to one another, back to their small group leaders, back to the church even? What are the steps in that? What are some of the steps in that? Okay, so great. I've actually got a couple here. Good. Uh, the very first thing, this might seem like a no-brainer, but let me let me explain it just a second. Quality time, getting back together with people, building those bridges, those those relationships back up to what they were before COVID and even beyond. Uh, and the the key word there is quality time, time where you were intentionally reconnecting and reinvesting in each other. And 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 we are we are investing heavily into our students so that so that. Our time together uh, is, a, is, a, is a time of healing, not just a time where we're slapping a Band-Aid over it. Now, this is actually very interesting. So keep in mind, the APA, not necessarily a Christian organization, right? Sure. But let me tell you what they recommend. So, so, so going back to that same article, I actually have an, another excerpt here on what they recommend to do about this, these, these feelings of, of, of isolation and loneliness. We are to focus on interventions that focused inward and address the negative thoughts underlying loneliness in the first place seem to help combat loneliness more than those designed to improve social skills, enhance social support, or increase opportunities for social interaction. So, yeah, social interaction is great, but in a secular APA article, they are recommending for you to do a little bit of heart work. They're recommending for you to look at where those those emotions, those 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 depressive like like feelings and mental state, where's that coming from inside of you? Why do you feel lonely? So, what are some ways that uh, that the students, then the families, would connect back to small group leaders? Say, use the Orchard Church as an example here. So, what are some ways that the, the families are going to connect back to, say, the small group leaders, say, the staff, say, the church, say, the, you know, even each other? Sure. Well, that right there is actually going to uh, let me let me take you through what Phase Three is going to look like in the world of of our middle school ministry. Sure. Just during Phase Three, we are giving our small group leaders and our parents and our students every opportunity we possibly can for them to spend time together and reconnect. Every event that we have, uh, last I looked at our calendar, we have three pool parties, we have five of our grilling out Bible studies, and we have two park days on top of just those impromptu meetings at like restaurants and things like that. And one thing that I told my team, our small group leaders are invited to every single one. They always are, but but we are actively inviting them to come and spend time with these students and and just and just rebuild those connections back up as much time as we can. Sure. And so I know because we've talked through some of the some of the those specific activities that you just mentioned, 
uh, those are chosen specifically because it does allow you to do some social distancing. It does allow you to protect the students and the families. And so families can, you are, because again, you're partnering with them. And so you're able to, to, to work with the family and say, hey, we, we care about your students socially, emotionally, relationally, physically, and spiritually, and COVIDly, if that's even a word, you know, like we want to, uh, we want to protect your child with regards to that. And so you've chosen some activities where there can be a little space it's some outdoor activities maybe some bridges back into some some form of normalcy whatever that is for us and and so I, I love the way that you've mentioned some of those and and I like the way too as we've talked off offline about some of the ways that you're communicating with those families because the truth is at this point you really have to over communicate because if it, communication was important before super important before but now when everybody is uncertain what the next days hold and and everybody you're, you, it's uncertain whether a family is ready to come back uh, right away or whether a family still has hesitation and whether they're they're uncertain and I know you guys are providing online elements as well even as you begin to, to bridge some opportunities back on site but the way that you're over communicating, the way that your plan is to over communicate those things to families because they just need to hear it over and over and over again. And that's not a slight on families. That's that's a that's actually a plus because they want to know what's happening and they want to know how you're partnering with those families. And, and the idea, the truth is they're they're wanting their their student uh, to reconnect as well. And if we're honest, those families are probably longing to reconnect as well. And so the church needs to come alongside. And, and it's not just the student who may be dealing with a little bit of a, a downerism, you know, over the, the, the course of this COVID time, maybe some some elements of depression and some things like that but but it's it's the families in general because everybody is affected through this COVID experience and the truth is as we go from phase two to phase three or if we in phase two and then it we remain in phase two because you know the the numbers go up or the you know whatever it is it does tend to weigh on you. It does tend to play with your emotions a bit. It does tend to, to a, a little yo-yo of experience in a way because you have some ups and you have some downs and you have some expectations, but then all of a sudden the, the these particular things aren't open back up yet. And it, it's just been an array of emotion for all families uh, over the past months. And we're prepared as we go forward to minister to those families regardless of what happens and regardless of whether it's the ups or regardless of whether it's the downs. And that's the beauty of the church. And that's the beauty of what you guys are doing in student ministry. And you particularly, Ryan, in middle school ministry. Tell me, just to, as a as a way of, of just talking through some of the things that you've done, um, I know that, that recently uh, you guys were, were trying to bridge back. You, you had um, certainly Zoom calls, right? Certainly Zoom, but right. Zoom fatigue was a real thing. Um, yeah. You were trying driveway driveway drop-ins where you created social distance but maybe had some some outdoor gaming that were that maybe it was little to no contact or some things like that uh, with part with parents permission or just tell me a, a, about a couple of those just to give some ideas out there of ways to to connect even when we aren't able to connect you're you're, you're making those strides so i think a key part of of of, of reconnecting is being really good and intentional at shepherding, right? And and the reason I say that is at the beginning of COVID, we like like everyone was hopping on the Zoom bandwagon, right? Everyone was saying, "Oh my gosh, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom! We got to do it, we got to do it." And we did it for a while, and for about three weeks, it worked okay. And then numbers started dropping off, interest started dying, screen fatigue started setting in, Zoom fatigue started setting in. Uh, you know, students started equating Zoom calls with like school, I think. And so like we we all, we all of a sudden realized we're not effectively reaching our flock anymore. Like we've got maybe 10 percent of our students showing up onto these Zoom calls and onto these Zoom Bible studies. We've got to change something. And we got to thinking, how can we how how can we adhere to CDC guidelines, but see our students face to face? That's what they're hungering for. And that's how we ended up coming up with the with the uh, driveway drop-ins and literally we we just we we called up parents asked them if they were interested if their kids were interested 
And I'm sure you won't be shocked, Jason. And if they were comfortable, right? Sure. Yeah. Yes. If they were comfortable, all that. And you, and I'm sure, you know, th this won't come as much as a surprise to a lot of people, but parents were pretty eager to get their kids out of the house and, 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 and let us hang out with them for a while. And, 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 and in those, those driveway drop-ins, it was just face-to-face -face reconnection. Sure. That's, that, that's what it was, letting them know that we care, that we understand where they're coming from, we know what they need, and we're going to meet that need as best we can, you know, from six feet away, giving sure. some air high fives, right? Sure, and I think you're selling you and your team short because I remember seeing the pictures and the videos, and, and it wasn't that you were just, you know, giving parents an opportunity to let their kid, as you say, get out of the house, um, though that might sometimes be the case. But I saw several times where you were actually, you all had the whole family outside a, a, a involved in these driveway drop-ins. And that that is truly partnering with the family. That is helping them make disciples in the home. Because as we as we say all the time, you, you guys only have a certain amount of time with the, the teenager um, on, on the course of a given week. But the family the family has an enormous amount of time, and so you are you are putting little drop ins, and you're giving uh, you're equipping those families with those moments where yeah they may have a, a, a reprieve, they may have a, an opportunity to come out and and have some fun with the, the the middle school ministry team as they were doing the drop ins or things like that, and your your DCs they were doing an incredible job, your discipleship coordinators and some of your small group leaders, and but but it also gave those families opportunities to keep the ongoing conversation conversation uh, happening even after you guys left. And then maybe when you drop the pictures on social media or something like that, it gave them those moments where they can say, hey, we're a part of something bigger. You know, our family, we're Christ followers, and you're a part of this student ministry and that middle school ministry and those those middle middle school uh, leaders that came by. They love you guys, and they're a, it's a microcosm of something bigger, and that's the church and the small group leaders that really loves you, that really thinks that you matter. You matter to God, and you matter to us, and those things that we say so often. But then also, it's a, it's a great gospel entry point because it gives those parents an opportunity to really share the gospel with their, their kids or—, or or maybe as believers uh, to reinforce the gospel message, right? So that it's yep. it's an encouragement to those families and those students to to then go and make disciples, as we say, you know, disciples making disciples making disciples. And so, I um, mean, that's that's really good. I also and think uh, hey, I've actually got a so so you asked originally for the for the steps to reconnection. I've yeah. actually got a third. So let me just let me. Just, let me just answer this by 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 going into this for just a second. Sure. Uh, I know that a lot of people think of oh, student ministry is just one big party. At least I think I think that's sort sort of the reputation that student ministry as a whole uh, ac across the country might have accrued for itself a little bit. And and you hear what I'm saying. You hear okay. I'm hearing driveway drop-ins. I'm hearing pool parties. I'm hearing field days. I'm hearing uh, I'm, I'm 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 hearing grilling out. Where's the discipleship, right? You even asked that question, Jason. And one thing I ask you guys that a lot, right? I, I want to make sure yeah. that, yeah, yeah. Right. where's the discipleship? And so to, to to kind of unpack that, let me just give an analogy. One of the things that I started picking up on, I've, I've, I've done it my whole life, but especially during quarantine, was gardening. Now, step one of gardening is not you take the seed and you throw it on the ground, right? Because that ground is hard. It's, it's, it's not going to provide the correct nourishment for the plants that you're planting. The first thing that, that you have to do is prepare the ground for the seed that you're planting. That's the very first step. And in the same way, does it sound like we're going a little heavy on activities at this stage? Sure, maybe. But it's all strategic. In fact, one of the things we always have to do in middle school, we've got to teach kids things sometimes without them even knowing they're being taught. And so, and so what we're doing is through this reconnection and going real heavy on activities to get people connected with their small group leaders, get parents reconnected with the ministry, kids reconnected with the ministry. What we're doing is we're preparing the ground so that whenever we do get back into, let's say, a phase four, back towards the school year, whenever things start to get somewhat back to normal, the ground's already prepared and we can dive headfirst into intentional discipleship so so basically we're preparing the ground for small group leaders and parents. Yeah. That's that's all we're doing.
Well, and you're and you're building and you're building trust. You're building you're building relational equity. You're reminding right now. You're just trying to get people back together to the reconnect. You're trying to get people back together to remind them that they like each other, that they're a family. Uh, we say all the time, a family of missionary servants sent to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Well, you got to be the family. You got to be together. You got to be, you know. And so, and you're building that relational equity so that then, yeah, you went you. What you say is getting caught. What you teach is getting caught. What you, you know, model is getting caught. And I love the fact, again, full circle, that you're partnering with the parents in that, that what you're teaching, you're also reminding the parents of that so that they can reinforce those things. And so you're you're reinforcing the message that, that hopefully the parents are already teaching in their home. And that's what a beautiful partnership in ministry is is between the home and the church. And so, Ryan, yeah, I, I'm really thankful. And I love this idea of reconnecting. We're going to talk more about this because we're, going to look, we're, we're really going to be needing to reconnect so much more in the days ahead. All right, so, Ryan, we'll talk more about that. But tell me this. Give me one hope, one hope that you have as a middle school director for the days ahead. My hope... Uh first and foremost, above all else, is that moving forward, we as the Orchard Middle School Ministry can effectively partner with parents in discipling their students. That's great. Okay. And yeah, that's, that's my number one hope, is that, is that the partnership between the home and, and the church is, is, is just strengthened so that so that the church is truly partnering with parents and making true self-sufficient disciples of their students. All right, Ryan, um, let me see here. Um, we're going to bring this to a close, but just before I do, give me, um, I'm going to ask you one more question here in a second, but give me your email address in case, in case our, our, our Orchard family wants to send you some, some messages and ask questions and how they can plug their student into the middle school ministry at, you know, at the Orchard Church and what, and what specifically will be opening up here in the days ahead and when that happens and so that they'll remain in the loop. Give me your email address there. Sure. So uh, my email address is ryan.steward, that's S-T-E-W-A-R-D, at theorchardchurch.com. And let me just say, whenever I get emails from parents asking me questions about, about, about maybe different approaches for, for discipleship, you know, any, anything I can do to help parents literally makes my day 10 times better. So sure. do not hesitate to reach out. Sure. Um, uh, and, then, and then as far as what's, what's going on, oh, well, no, you... You said you told them to email me. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah, that's good. Um, I, I always love your eagerness, Ryan. You know, that's one of my favorite things about you. You, you, you are who you are, and I love that. You know, and uh, and I know that the middle school students and families are they love that as well. And and let me just say that if you have not plugged your student into the middle school ministry, I get right now it's a little difficult. But in the days ahead. Ryan and his team of discipleship coordinators and small group leaders and all those that are partnering with uh, you, the home, uh, in, in, in ministry to your family, um, give them a shot. Uh, send Ryan that email. Tell him you'd like to, to know more about when things begin to open up. Or, or maybe if you're one of our, our friends that view or listen to this podcast, not from the, uh, the Orchard Church area, then uh, then feel free to send him emails and learn more about what they're doing to reconnect during this time and in the days ahead, because that's what this podcast is. We're here to help you make disciples in your home. And so, Ryan, let me just ask you one final question. Ryan, is there a book maybe that you recommend, something you've been reading, something you've read, just something that you might encourage families to check out here in the days ahead? Sure. So I've actually got two. Okay. Uh, first, for, for, for our parents out there, for anyone who is who is trying to get into a deeper discipleship relationship with Christ or teach others how to deepen their discipleship walk with Jesus, I cannot recommend the gospel-centered life enough. Uh, parents, they actually make a gospel-centered life for teens, so feel free to pick that up on Amazon. Uh, a, a, a wonderful book. I cannot recommend it enough. I've been through it a couple of times already. And then for for you know, maybe the aspiring minister out there for, for, for those of us who are, who are in the ministry, um, or, or those of us who are, who are mature Christians who are just looking to deepen our understanding of, 
of, of, of how to live this Christian life in the best way possible, I have to recommend Letters to My Students by Charles Spurgeon. Uh, I've been, I've been reading through it right now and, and, and it's truly life-changing stuff. You have to check it out. Well, Ryan, I'm thankful for you, man. I'm thankful for partnering with you at the Orchard Church. I'm thankful for the way that you love and minister alongside the families of the Orchard Church, especially within the middle school ministry. But the truth is, Ryan, I see you, Heather, and now David, I see you all out, and I see you really um, looking to connect. So you are indeed trying to do what you're saying. And uh, and I know that that uh, it's not easy, this whole idea of reconnecting after COVID. And so, um, and I look forward to working alongside you and, and partnering in that as we figure out how to help families reconnect after COVID. But thanks for your time today and for all those listening wherever you are thank you thank you we're trying to help you make disciples in your home and this podcast and others can be found on apple spotify youtube google wherever you find your podcast be sure to like and subscribe to this podcast so to make sure that you don't miss any of the future episodes and as always if you have a suggestion please email me jason holmes i'm family's pastor at the orchard church a family of missionary servants sent to make disciples of jesus christ and that email address is jason.holmes h-o-l-m-e-s at the orchardchurch.com ryan Together, man, let's, let's, uh, let's encourage those we come into contact. Let's love God, love others, and let's make disciples. Sound good? Yes, sir. All right. Have a great day, buddy. So long now.